Hello, everybody. Dr. Duck Wong here, world famous bariatric surgeon. I want to pop in real quick for a live to tell you why I disagree with the new CDC mask guidelines. Now, it's a good day. We're waiting for these this day. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. I just don't agree with their approach or their timing and how they did it. So we're going to break that down. But in the meantime, if you're watching this on the replay, hashtag replay, you can fast forward to about the five minute mark. That's when I'll get started. And um, for those of you who are just coming on, just comment where you're watching from. What are you doing? Are you fully vaccinated? Are you going to continue to wear a mask, not wear a mask? And how do you feel about this new CDC guidelines? I'm about an hour behind schedule and I uh, appreciate the patience. Normally I go live every day at 9 a.m. But today I um, started a little bit late. Barbara says, by pulmonologist said, wear your mask. I, I agree with that. Hi, Mary Beth Carswell. How are you doing? Michelle O'Connor, hello. Please hit share button. Let me know where you're watching from. We usually get a couple of hundred people in here. Bunny Bubs is waiting for this. I know, me too, but we got to do it full, do it great. Helene is watching on YouTube there, fully vaccinated. That's awesome. My hair is growing back fast, right? Good morning, Valley Share. We're going to talk about uh, why this is important. Heather Rochelle in Pennsylvania, what do you think about the new mask mandates, Heather? You're a nurse practitioner. Uh, Robert Simpson disagreed too. Weeble's watching California. Awesome. Fully vaccinated, still wearing a mask. Christy McCullough. I think that's smart. That's what I do. I'm not going to make you watch me do push-ups. Well, I better make you. I better do push-ups today, huh? <laughs> I better do it. Let's see what Carla says. Uh, Arizona, fully vaccinated, disagree with the new CDC. <laughs> you know it, baby. She says the first cuss word, Stephanie, if you've been vaccinated, already have COVID, why mask up? Uh, we're going to talk about that today. Wearing mask and fully vaccinated. What's up? What's up? Working in a grocery store. Hell no. Mask on. That's a good idea, right? Hold on. Catherine, fully vaccinated. Uh, both adult kids fully vaccinated. Awesome. Good job. Oh, nice, Aaron. Thank you for doing the green smoothies. Uh, green smoothies, big ass salad, lots of water, no snacking. That's absolutely important. Fully vaccinated, Danette, are you gonna wear a mask? Let's see what we're gonna talk about here. New York, New York Yankee, fully vaccinated, COVID got it again. Yep, 694%, right? 6% people will still get it. Um, and I saw that article about the New York Yankees. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what they were vaccinated with, I don't know. Okay, so um, in case you're just new to me, um, new to the whole what's happening in May, uh, I have a, seat, a private challenge group, and uh, I, I challenged them to go live every single day in May, and I said I would do the same thing. So here we are. Today is, I think, the 14th. Let me check. Uh, May 14th. Yep, Friday, May 14th. And I also started doing push-ups. Why? I hate doing push-ups. I'm a scrawny, skinny-ass Asian, but I love to garden. So one of the things I teach my following and my patients is that if you're trying to develop a new good habit, you, but, but you don't like it, you need to tie it to something you do love. Okay. So, and you need to start super small. So I actually started with one push up. I promise you. It's been about two months now. And then I was like, one push up is kind of silly. I can do one push up. So I started doing 10 push ups. And now I'm up to 30 push ups a day. So I owe you push ups. I'm going to do that real quick. You guys can count me off while we wait for some people to go on. Can you hit the share button? This is my new office in my new house. All right, all right. So let me get you guys back here. Okay. That's hopefully y'all can see me here on the ground here. Count me off. Ready? Yep. Oh, and I'm going to tell you right now, I don't feel like doing push-ups. I don't want to do push-ups, but there's some gardening stuff I've got to do. So I'm going to do push-ups. 30, ready? Count me off. One, two, three, four, five. Twenty-one. Twenty-five. 
six, seven, eight, twenty-nine, thirty. <sighs> Feeling pretty good, right? How'd I look? What do you guys think? Grimaldi's Pizza in New York, baby. My friend owns Grimaldi's. The entire chain. He's in my mastermind group. Okay. So, thank you guys. It's getting easier, man. Today's Friday, Sunday. I have to go increase to 32. So, if you're watching next week, I'll be doing 32 push-ups. We'll see how we do. All right. Yup, yup. That's it. I did it. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Thank you for hitting the share button. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Yep. My, my friend owns Grimaldi's. Woodlands is nice. Thank you, Aisha. Looking good there. Stay safe. Yep. Kevin's right. Fully vaccinated. Let's get started. Whew, catch my breath. Ugh. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Duck Von, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. You might know me from my COVID videos. And as we wind, wind down this pandemic, I'm going live every single day in May to kind of give you some impartial information, what I think is going to happen, what we need to do. So today is May 14th. And yesterday, the CDC updated their mask guidelines. And I'm here to tell you why I disagree with them. It's nothing salacious, nothing um too hard to understand but yesterday the cdc said basically anybody who's fully vaccinated uh no longer for the most part they don't need to wear masks indoors or outdoors a couple of situations though they do recommend it for public transportation uh a lot of uh, a mass gathering indoors and uh, any local requirements. So if you're locally, your grocery store, for example, you know, one of the major grocery store chains here in Texas called HEB, they still require people to wear masks, et cetera. But for the most part, you can go to restaurants without masks. You can do um, small churches, small gatherings, et cetera, if you're fully vaccinated. And what they claim was that the science has kind of come together uh, recently, three studies were published, which one showed the um, efficacy of the vac vaccinations, showed that um, people who are fully vaccinated are not really spreaders of the disease. And number three, and probably the most important, is that the vaccines, the vaccinations seem to be a, effective against um, these vari the variants, specifically the UK variant. And so when all of that came together, the CDC decided to update their mask mandate, basically dropping it for everybody who's fully vaccinated. Now, why do I disagree with this? Number one, which is um, important. Okay, so I want to make this point and it's super important. Now, only 45% of Americans are fully vaccinated, which is amazing because a few weeks ago we weren't even there and we have a lot of naysayers, et cetera. I think we'll get to the, the, uh, the goal of 70% by 4th of July. That's happening pretty uh, quickly. We're getting to about two and a half million vaccinations a day here in America. Uh, but, in, Another way to look at this, though, is 55% of Americans are not vaccinated. And so, and we know that the vaccines are, while wonderful, they're not 100% effective. They're 94% effective. So you still carry a 6% chance of catching COVID fully vaccinated. 6%, very low, but you can still catch it. In the recent news this morning, the New York Yankees announced that eight of their players, though they were fully vaccinated, tested positive for COVID. Uh, also, Bill Maher, the TV uh, show guy, uh, he tested positive for COVID, even though he's supposedly fully vaccinated. So you can still catch COVID. Now, having said that, these people who have, uh, have caught COVID um, full, while fully vaccinated, 
for the most part, they're pretty asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic, which is what we want with a vaccine. So 94% in, in the big studies, right, which is why the, the vaccines were not fucking rushed, there were no shortcuts, et cetera, et cetera, these big studies that showed the efficacy of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, 94% did not come down with COVID. The 6% who were vaccinated who developed COVID had milder symptoms, none of them were hospitalized and none of them died. So in other words, the vaccinations were 100% effective in keeping your ass alive. And also if you did catch it, then you had a much milder case of it. So that seems to be the case with these athletes and um, Bill Maher who recently came down with, with, with COVID. Now, the problem is we, I'm gonna do number two, And this is one of um, my major issues right here. I usually do these caps on. So the problem is we still don't know the real long-term effects of COVID. We know long hauler syndrome, right? A lot of patients, now some up to 30%, um, up to 30%, 30% of patients who recover from COVID have, have lingering effects. This is commonly known as long haulers syndrome, like they're called long haulers. Um, and they might have these lingering COVID side effects for six, nine, 12 months, and they don't seem to be getting better. And some of the signs of the long haulers, some of the symptoms include chronic fatigue, breathlessness, malaise. They often describe the brain fog. They can't quite think clearly. They can't remember. Um, they want to sit on the couch. They want to stay in bed all the time. If they have um, uh, any sort of exertion, they get winded easily. So, and these are people that are not old. They're usually in their thirties and forties and they, and they're not like morbidly obese or have a lot of comorbidities. A lot of them were used to be cyclists, runners, athletic fit. And now they're having in the primary of their lives, they're having terrible symptoms, migraines. Uh, we have documented uh, cardiomyopathies, uh, that's heart conditions, and as well as renal conditions. So, so knowing that, you have to kind of rationalize this and say, well, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe I might survive COVID, but I don't, I don't want to. Um, risk the chance of having this long hauler syndrome when we know that seven, like 30%, that's almost one in three will have some sort of lasting problem. And the problem is we don't know how long it lasts. Okay. What I will tell you though, because it's not in the news, pay attention. This is not in the news. Um, there are people, there are organizations, the big money people, they are already starting to set up clinics designed specifically for long haulers. Um, so that's, um, that is not in the news, but the people in the know, know <laughs> that uh, we're gonna have a massive amount of people, a huge population of people who will need um, to be treated for long haulers. And so they're setting up full clinics and hospital systems designed just specifically for them. Well, what will this entail? Well, it turns out one of the, the best treatments for long hauler syndrome is actually getting vaccinated, which makes sense because possibly long haulers might be due to like a low level of um, virus inside of your system that your immune system can't clear on its own. So when you get vaccinated, that would make sense that now you develop antibodies and memory B cells and T cells that then boost your immune system and helps to clear any sort of lingering low levels of virus. Does that make sense? So these clinics are getting ramped up to do uh, immunizations, um, uh, monoclonal antibodies, but sadly, they're also ramping up to include physical therapy. Uh, so conditioning, reconditioning people. Um, they're also setting up some IV infusions for there's always somebody who's watching my lives and then they'll go, what about vitamin D and vitamin and you just need to boost your immune system with zinc and you need to eat right. You need, well, it's too fucking late now. 
right? You, we should have been doing this the whole time before the pandemic started. So it's kind of late now to get on your high horse and start thumping your chest. So um, these clinics will also include IV vitamins, things like that. And, um, and I've done videos where I've broken down the recent data on, on um, ivermectin, vitamin D. You know, vitamin D seems to help a little bit, but the whole vitamin C, no, no data to support it. Zinc, no data to support it. Ivermectin, no data to support it. And all these people just go on and on and on, right? So um, just know that, that that's the problem. So let me get to number number three about the CDC mask mandate. Um, and I'm not political, but I understand how this, um, these things work and, and I'm not blaming it on any sort of it. Well, I am kind of blaming it on uh, previous administrations, but masks are still very politically charged. And by dropping these guidelines like this, you're putting people who, let's say your mom or, or, your, grand, or your grandmother, whoever, or you, myself, right, always wore masks, always protect ourselves. We had bottles of hand sanitizers. We ate outdoors and we did outdoor dining. We minimized our grocery shop and we did all that sort of stuff. Now, basically, you're telling me I can drop my mask, right, which is what we want, by the way. But now I'm going into an environment where I have there's nothing on me that says I'm fully vaccinated, which I am. I got the Moderna vi uh, vaccine. I got my second dose um, two weeks ago. Uh, so I'm completely um, yeah, vaccinated. My whole family's vaccinated pretty much. Uh, Erica's vaccinated. Uh, my 14 year old is um, her mom's going to take her to get vaccinated uh, later this week. And so I mean, we're basically vaccinated so we can get together without masks now. But I mean, when you go into a public environment, a public arena, there's no sign over my forehead or on my body that says I'm fully vaccinated. Just like there's no sign that tells somebody else like you're not vaccinated. So what we have here and when I say it's politically charged, what it comes down to basically is this trust idea. Uh, and we, whether you want to agree with me or not, we have a problem with trust in this country. And I'm going to talk about America in particular. And that is like, I want to believe the best uh, of my fellow America, but because this pretty Asian face, um, I know it's at risk for not equally being received as well because as we know the asian hate crime is high has really spiked up we've seen all the reports on that and i won't belabor that point now i'm pretty blessed i've i have not had to confront any issues because of how i look but i think um i think that until we have further guidance we we needed to kind of like slowly come out also, um, what um, we have to remember is that percentage-wise speaking, the vast majority of Americans are still not vaccinated, right? So use this in your head. Like if you know that 55% of Americans are not vaccinated, yet you go to a bar or a restaurant or a movie theater and nobody's wearing masks, that doesn't make sense, right? So at least half of the people need to be wearing masks. Uh, just kind of, that would make sense. That means like, okay, you can kind of trust most people are doing what they should be doing. Some people who have denied wearing masks, who've said it was a violation of rights, you can't tell me what to do, you're a sheeple, yada, 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 they're not going to change their tune which makes no sense, right? So if the CDC was telling you, if your leaders were telling you to wear a mask and you said, no, you can't tell me what to do. Now the leaders in the CDC is saying, don't wear a mask. Well, if you can't tell me what to do is your attitude, shouldn't you be putting on mask? <laughs> Logically thinking, you know, like you can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me not to wear a mask. So I'm going to put on a mask. Hey, maybe that's crazy logic. Maybe that will work. 
I don't think it'll work. I don't think that that if they've been a mask denier, they're going to suddenly start wearing a mask. Does that make sense? So what this will do now is to start leading um, to a little bit of tension, a little bit of tension between people. Right. And that's the last thing we really want. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I want to get to a point to a new normalcy where we can go without masks, but we're not quite there yet. What I would have done, I'm not in a position, but this makes more sense to me is kind of held this as a carrot, you know, say, Hey, if we can get to a 70% vaccination rate, if we can get to a 70% vaccination rate, then we set this up as a target. Like, okay, the reward right? You guys saw me do push-ups, So the reward is gardening. If we can get to 70% vaccination, then we can drop the mask mandate. And that would make more sense, right? Because at 70, we really need 80% to really kind of get this herd immunity thing, 80, 85%. But I think around 70% would, would be fine. But to drop the mask mandate right now doesn't make sense because we're not at that vaccination point. So what I'm going to say, and I don't know for sure, uh, and I'll just say probably. And um, oh, hold on, which I think will probably be true. But you have to agree that the timing of this and how it rolled out was kind of was kind of sneaky right it was kind of odd so my guess is the cdc the directors of the cdc world health organization everybody they're probably under a lot of political pressure to make a decision to give this guidance to update it so that you can kind of give people a certain amount of hope well my issue with this is you know as when i was growing up and maybe I was foolishly believing this, but I always thought of the CDC as a neutral, non-political party that obviously went away with the last administration when they took the CDC reporting and out of the control of the CDC and reported the COVID numbers through the White House. So that automatically made the CDC no longer a neutral body, which I think led to the distrust and led to the mixed messaging coming out. Uh, from our leaders. I'm not saying that problem is fixed. I'm not saying that this new administration is doing a better job. I'm just saying that there's probably underlying political pressure that I think um, has a lot to do with what's happening now. So what I would like for to encourage y'all and see, I haven't even really said a cuss word yet. I mean, this is a pretty nice, calm interview, <laughs> right? Um, what I would do is encourage you guys to use your common sense, to be kind to each other, get vaccinated uh, if you're able to. If you choose not to, that's up to you, but understand you're putting yourself at risk because the truth of the matter is 30% of people with COVID have long hauler symptoms. That's a lot. I mean, most people would love to have an 8% return on their retirement or their stocks or even 10%, 10%, 8%, even 6%. So don't dismiss 30%. That is super high number of people. And we don't know the long-term effects of that. People go, yeah, but tell me the long-term effects of the vaccine. Dude, the vaccine just came out. We don't know the long-term effects of the vaccine, except to say that it appears to be mostly safe. And, 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 uh, but we can also say, we can say that the vaccine appears to be mostly safe. And we know that long hauler syndrome appears to be really real and devastating. So, um, will long hauler syndrome get better as we get better treatments, vaccinations? Yes, possibly. Might there be a few blips or whatever with vaccination? Sure. Just like we saw with the J and J and and the six blood clots but remember blood clots happen all the time i mean there are lots of reasons why people get blood clots just taking a birth control pill is a risk for blood clots but women take birth control pills all the time so i you know there's this really confusion when people who barely pass science is trying to have an opinion and you're entitled to your opinion but just remember like there are sometimes like it's better to give up your opinion and just 
do what you need to do, wait out the time, and we can get back to a better level of normalcy. All right, thank you guys very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the share button, please hit the like button. As always, I will edit this down, put this up on my YouTube channel. Uh, I appreciate y'all very much. Uh, be amazing, be kind to each other, be patient, but really start to, um, to be smart about your surroundings, okay? And I'll go live again tomorrow and this weekend. I'll see you soon. Thank you guys. Bye.